would all regard some of our earlier performances as our beginning steps, you know, our baby steps of, of developing voice work. And I have to tell you, when you first start doing voice work, if you're not used to recording and hearing your voice in the headphones, it takes some time to get used to. Uh, a lot of people that, of novice actors that try voice acting are horrified by the sound of their own voice when they hear it back. So that's a good thing to get comfortable with if you're at all interested in getting into this business. <laughs> Did you ever go through that? And you probably didn't. Oh, yeah, no, I did. Uh, it, 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 sometimes it's got to be. Yeah. They say, you know, how, you know, how's your level? You know, in the can, which is another term for headphones. You like, you're like, uh, good. <laughs> I mean, good. <laughs> Great. But it was odd, yeah. Hearing yourself talking back, and then sometimes people would say, well, you don't have to use them. Yeah. Okay, with. And then eventually I got used to taking one of the cans off so I'd have some sound in my left ear and then room sound in my right ear, and, you know. Yep. And now I just kind of go with the flow, it depends on what it is. You have to learn to get really comfortable with your voice and be the critic in your own head to know that you're putting forward your best performance because if you don't self-censor on some level and regulate the quality of what you're doing, they'll accept what you give them because to the objective world, they think what you're doing is great. So inside, if you know you've got a better performance as we were talking about earlier, you want to be sure that's the one that they keep, you know. But there's, it's the same thing with being on camera. Sometimes there's characters I play on camera and I'm just like, ah, I just, I just didn't see myself that way, you know. Sometimes you look in the mirror and you're like, who is that? <laughs> I feel that way every day. <laughs> I just did a, a, a commercial on camera thing that, uh, that was an industrial shoot that you guys probably won't ever see, but um, when I was looking, I, I ran behind the camera to kind of take a look at a playback, and um, I wasn't happy with it at all, but it's not my point, to, I'm not the one, you know, directing, I have to, you have to be subjective as well and just go with it, so yeah. Life, what we do is, is difficult in so many ways. It's constantly subjected to criticism. So, there's a little uh, good guy on one shoulder, bad guy on the other shoulder, and one's telling you, cheering you on, and the other's, you know, critical. So. <laughs> do, do you want to give uh, a Okay. You guys want to sing along? Sure. Sing along. Yeah. Real quick. Then the panel. Okay. Yeah, well, last question we have is something about. Uh, what was your favorite Beatles song? Oh, Beatles. Yeah. And, and I was saying that um, I had done uh, uh, Sir Paul McCartney and a couple of movies. You know, what you can see on the internet. It's called A Hard Day's Day, A Day in the Life of the Beatles Tribute Band. Right, guys. And then uh, and there's a movie I'm called uh, My Dinner with Jim. And they said, uh, what's your favorite Beatles number? I said, I don't know, but we wrote uh, Yellow Submarine for Ringo. You know, he get one song per album. And that one is one of the most fav favorite songs to sing along to. So I think everybody started singing. Yeah. See what it is. And how does it go? In the town where I was born, lived a man who sailed the sea, and he told us of his life in the land of submarines. So we sailed to the sea, to the sea, to the sea, and we lived in the way. In our yellow submarine, we are living in a yellow submarine.